Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I have a channeling of one of my favorites in the afterlife, and that is Ms. Marilyn Monroe. She always lifts my spirit. Her energy is so loving, lighthearted, and fun. So I thought, as we are going to be channeling Ms. Marilyn Monroe, that I would bring out some bubbly, some pink Moscato champagne, and a pretty glass, and have some bubbly while we channel. Now, I don't usually recommend uh, partaking in the adult alcoholic beverages during channeling. However, today I will make an exception, and I'll have a few sips with my friend Marilyn. Now, there is a playlist for Marilyn Monroe because I like her very much. I have connected with Marilyn before, so go ahead and check out the playlists. If you also are interested in old Hollywood types, I've channeled other actors and actresses as well from that time period. So let's see if I can open this up. Ooh, and here comes the bubbles. Ooh, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Yes, all right. So let's have a toast to Ms. Marilyn here. Let's do that. Ooh, look at that. Nice bubbly glass. Mm -mm -mm. True story. I did not drink champagne, pink champagne especially, until I started channeling Marilyn Monroe. So cheers, darling, to you and the beautiful spirit that you are. And she says, oh, thank you, Bridget. Thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's channel. So I have to talk to you, Mayor. So the deal is, is I did a channeling with Joe. Joe DiMaggio, one of your husbands, your previous lovers. And I'm gonna be sharing that at Above Life Channel. I thought it'd be a good idea to talk to you about Joe as well, because he had some really sweet things to say about you. So do you want, is there anything that you'd want us to know or to share with us about your marriage to Joe DiMaggio or your relationship with Joe? <sighs> okay, you guys, so when I feel her energy, I just almost take on her uh, mannerisms because it's just so easy to, <laughs> to feel the energy and share the space with her. So she says, Joe is a dear. She says, Joe is a dear. He's a very kind man, she says. And like with any man, they can get moody and temperamental. And Joe was no exception to this, but he was very kind. He was very kind. He was passionate and driven and I really had a lot of respect for him as a man. He really did for me represent home, uh, a feeling of stability, a feeling of family. Unfortunately, we weren't able to realize that dream together and you know I had miscarriages and I, it was publicized in my relationship with Arthur, with one of my other husbands. And when I met Joe, I, I was enchanted by him. He was such a man, such a man and such a protective energy or such a protective, he said, she says person, such a protective person. I say energy because that's how I feel him like or like he feels like a big block, you know, and I believe that he thought he wanted what was best for me and that there were times when I wasn't capable. I really wasn't in a, a place where I could make very good decisions for myself and during those times it was just so much easier to rely on him you know to rely on a man to 
set things straight. And it's no one's fault, really, that things didn't work out between Joe and I. But it was more than just timing. It wasn't just timing. It was... The stakes were really high. And I wasn't... I wasn't quite ready to leave Hollywood and to be a housewife. I, in so many ways, I had worked so hard to move beyond that. And in my heart, I really, I wanted that. I wanted that. But it didn't seem like it was meant for me. And I mean, Joe would have been happy with a, uh, a house and uh, kids, you know, playing in the yard and me retired from movies and I, I just wasn't ready for that. It's kind of one of those things that you don't really know what you want until you're in that circumstance and that situation and then you realize, wait, I'm not ready for this. That's that's the way it felt in my relationship with Joe. But I do want to say, I do want people to know that he was kind. He was kind. He was a kind man. And, and he did have some trouble when he drank. And <laughs> I don't fault him for that. I don't blame him for that. And it wasn't his fault, our relationship. I thought I wanted to slow things down and to settle into a quieter life. And um, I just couldn't stop being in movies, being part of the creative process. It was so fabulous. There's something about being on the set and with other very talented people, so talented. I never quite felt like I belonged there. And in a way, you know, it's funny because I feel like I was always auditioning and yet never quite satisfied with any of the performances that I was able to give. And, and I know, I know that's silly. I know that's so silly that for me to sit and criticize myself, and that's not a very good example for any of you, but that is the truth. That, that's really how I felt. And to see my movies now, you might not know that, but I just, I wanted so much to be part of something so great, so fabulous, like those beautiful wo women that I had seen in the movies and just, they just struck me. I was just in awe of them and they were so beautiful. And did I, did I not think I was beautiful or good enough? You might be asking that question. Truth is, I don't think any woman ever thinks they're beautiful enough. And I wouldn't share with you my beauty secrets, although I will share with you that I did use, and it looks like Vaseline, you guys. It looks like a Vaseline kind of a thing, like some kind of putty emollient, like by her eyes, under her eyes. <laughs> She's showing you that. And I love, she says, I adore makeup. I adore makeup. And her, the false eyelashes and the beautiful eyes. And, and she says, um, but I know I was beautiful. I know. I did feel loved very much. But that doesn't help cure that, that part of ourselves, I think, that that wants to be loved all the time, not just in the movies, but all the time. When you're reading a book, quiet, quiet night at home by yourself, it can seem quite nice. But then when you realize that there's really nobody there in the middle of the night, 
you know, at 1 or 2 a.m. when it's time to go to bed and you're alone, those are the times I dread. Those are the moments where the loneliness was... It was almost like demons, monsters in the night. Those feelings of no one wanting to be with you, but only for a moment. I suppose it was my choice, my doing, to push people away. I was rather good at that. And it may seem like I just played with men or with relationship, and that is probably because I I may have been looking for something outside of myself through those big, strong men providing protection and security and making decisions for me. It was so much easier to let others do that. than to live life just so overwhelmed and but wanting, wanting to be part of the incredible, incredible industry and glamorous and fantastic, filled with very talented people and I couldn't imagine saying goodbye to that would have broken my heart. To grow old gracefully is not my style. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It's true I wanted to be a mother. It's, it's very true. But only for perhaps maybe selfish reasons. I mean, if you actually consider the facts, I was not one that was raised to be a mother. Could I be mothering? Of course, of course. But in the long term, could I have been good at it, really good at it? I don't know. I don't know. But to always have someone with me, looking at me with adoring eyes, that would have been wonderful. So maybe it's better that I did not have children of my own because perhaps may, maybe I wanted them for the wrong reasons. I'm not sure how I feel about that now. Of course, I have the opportunity of a unique reflection. And I know that there will be so many people watching that may not be able to relate to what it is that I share about relationships and men and motherhood. But you've got to remember, it's a different time now for you. Had I been here in your lifetime, it could have been something vastly different, especially with all the mental health talk and the discussion about health care and taking care of our, ourselves, body, mind, and soul. That spirit energy that Bridget talks about all the time, and I see how happy it makes her. Maybe I could have had those experiences. And maybe I would have done different things in my career. I can't say for sure. It's interesting to think about it, though, isn't it? Mm. It is. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you guys. She's talking about something that I haven't shared with you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Marilyn. <laughs> She's telling me, and Bridget's thinking about cutting her hair. Q. 
Can you even imagine that? Why would she do that? <laughs> oh, Marilyn, come on. Because it's mine and I can do whatever I choose to do. And if I want to cut off this big mane of puffy hair and just let it grow all back again, I can do that. And I will do that. And she says, oh, women's liberation. She says, women's live. I never quite understood that version of feminism. She says, hmm. Yeah, she's like, sex appeal is much better of a choice, my dear. She says, much better of a choice. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, I adore you. I love talking to you. You're so much fun. I just, you guys, oh, I do love talking to her. Can you tell? Can you feel the vibrational energy of Ms. Marilyn Monroe? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because when I connect with her and I, can feel her energy and allow it to be part of my energy experience, then I can embody that presence in a way that is so easy and delightful to do. And so in my, what you're not hearing is when I'm asking her things, like I do ask her questions and things while I'm in this um, kind of a co-creation of energy with her and she's responding to things that I'm thinking about as we're connecting. So it's pretty cool. You are such a lovely spirit and you're so joyful. You're so, one of the things I would love for you to know viewers is that Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife has such a joyful spirit, very playful. She's creative and she's smart when it comes to creating things and to understanding like patterns and energy. And she just, she just understands and, She's inspiring like that way, like she just inspires you to feel good about yourself and to, you know, go easier on yourself, I think, not be so judging or critical of yourself, I think, is part of what Marilyn brings forward when I connect with her as well. So thank you so much for being here, for being a fun channel. I love channeling you. It is always such a pleasure. I hope you have enjoyed watching this. So as always, I hope that this video with Ms. Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife has inspired your spirit, has filled you up with some hope because the point is, is that this is your life. This is your life now. So live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching.